This is Ray Bosolder with part three of Fox News Fires Tucker Carlson. And allow me to tell you, Tucker's name won't come up in this report except at this moment. But something he did that may have caused him to be fired needs to be examined more closely. I'm going to try to answer today whether Tucker Carlson, in editing the videos of the January 6th invasion of our Capitol building in Washington, D.C. in 2021, were edited only to trick us, the viewers, into believing that the riot wasn't a riot at all, but a peaceful walk through Congress by citizens of the United States, some dressed in outlandish outfits, giving the impression of a riot when one didn't see and wasn't there to say whether it was a riot or not. The material I'm using in this report was edited by me from the April 28th front page of the Epic News. I'm going to introduce you to a friend, and I'm going to ask a question. Extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures. Why would Stephen Friend, an FBI special agent, not want to hunt down and jail rioters who killed police officers at the United States Capitol on January 6, 2021. The question, its justification, and its accuracy were equally troubling when they were presented to friend by an FBI superior on August 23, 2022. Friend told the FBI agent, no police officers were killed by any of the individuals who were charged with the violence at the Capitol on January 6th. Friend, who at the time was a fairly recent transfer to the FBI in Florida, had arrived there from Iowa, and he had just lodged a complaint against what he saw as heavy-handed tactics being planned against January 6 suspects in Florida. Sitting with the FBI assistant special agent in charge, he felt he had to correct some of the misinformation that was being used to justify those tactics. Friend told the Epoch Times there was little pause on his part, like that was new information to him. That was never anything that had crossed his mind. Friend said during filming for an upcoming Epoch Times documentary on the events of January 6, 2021, quote, And while I'm aware that an arrest warrant is a legal order from a judge, I have an oath to protect the Constitution. I felt that us being outside the rules with following our case procedures was a potential breach of the Sixth Amendment for due process. The arrestee in question had already been in contact with the FBI. He was interviewed by FBI agents yet plans were set to go in heavy for his arrest. There's a whole array of methods that could, you can use to bring somebody into custody that doesn't involve the use of the tactical team. That really is the utmost, the highest level of enforcement. Friend said that he was told he was being 
a bad team member and shouldn't report for work the next day. Then he was counted as absent without leave, A-W-O-L, and his security clearance was suspended. On September 19, 2022, he was completely suspended from his job. His income dropped to zero, and he wasn't allowed to seek an outside job. His convictions were about to be seriously tested. Being kicked out of the FBI ended up being just the very beginning of Friend's concerns with the FBI. He had moved his family to Florida primarily to work on human trafficking, which was a subject close to his heart. Friend said, quote, the sexual trafficking of minors and young adults has exploded into an urgent national crisis. However, he was reassigned from that role to the Joint Terrorism Task Force investigating and hunting down January 6th suspects. Friend also called out what he saw as a deviation from the FBI's normal case management protocols that he believes were employed to create the illusion that domestic terrorism is a much bigger issue than it actually is. He explained, they've chosen to open hundreds of cases and then spread them around the country. That gives the impression that domestic terrorism is a nationwide threat. When really the numbers the FBI is, are touting stem from one incident on one day. That's a problem for America. The FBI is supposed to stand for law and order, but instead we are raising the temperature in our country. Friend says he could easily sit across the table from someone with an opposite political view and have a respectful conversation about you know, corporate taxes or some other issue. But that individual will never have that conversation with me if he thinks I'm a member of the Taliban. The FBI is contributing to that by making the rest of the country think that half of its citizens are domestic terrorists. With that kind of thinking, we're never going to be able to have the conversations necessary to address some really important issues. FBI officials didn't respond by press time to a request by the Epoch Times for a comment on Fred's case. The FBI, however, expressed some significant concerns about Fred's forthcoming book. The True Blue, that's the name of it, True Blue, My Journey from Beat Cop to Suspended FBI Whistleblower. In an email letter to Friend, dated April 21st, the FBI demanded redactions on 36 pages of his book, including all of the contents of pages 85 to 110. But Friend says he has no plans to redact his book. Joseph E. Bender, Jr., acting chief of the FBI's Record Information Dissemination Section, wrote Friend, quote, Your manuscript was reviewed pursuant to the terms of the pre-publication review policy, and we concluded some of the information presented 
falls within a restricted area of disclosure. Pre-publication approval is contingent upon removal of the redacted information as shown in the attached version. There is no objection to the remainder of your work as you presented it. Friend says he's equally disturbed by how the process of January 6 cases ends up, ends up punishing every suspect before they ever even get a day in court. He said, for many people who are being interviewed by the FBI, there's no case to be built against them for what happened on January 6th. It could be stemming from an anonymous tip where there's no cell phone GPS information, no facial recognition software. The FBI is still knocking on that person's door, and that's an undue stress for anybody. Friend interviewed one suspect who attended then-President Donald Trump's speech at the Ellipse on January 6, 2021, and then walked to the Capitol. He asked Capitol Police if he could enter, and was told it was okay. He didn't even walk beyond the red velvet rope. He walked to the Capitol for a few minutes, and into it, and was exited. We asked him, did you take anything? He told us apologetically that he'd taken a free brochure that was available for people who were touring the Capitol. He'd taken it as a keepsake. Now that man told me this story inside a law office, which I'm sure wasn't free for him. He also told us that was the biggest mistake of his life because he lost his career over it. He might never face jail time, and if he does, it'll probably be minimal. But even if he never sits inside a jail, even if he's never charged with a crime, he's been punished. That, to me, is wrong. Friend said, most FBI agents view January 6, 2021 as a criminal matter for some individuals. We're all fully aware that there has been a tendency to overcharge, to truly reach into the corners and to try to scoop up everybody. And the rumbling message that we've heard that the FBI wants to make a point to charge every single person they possibly can is because of the magnitude of what happened on January 6th. It's a misallocation of resources. I think that's what happens when political agenda marries opportunism. There are some true believers some people generally, genuinely feel that January 6th, 2021 was the worst day in the history of America. There are others who think it's just a four-hour disturbance. For the true believers, they feel they are on a righteous mission. And for the others, they see this as the largest, most important case that they ever are going to encounter in their FBI career. And it behooves them to jump on that if they have ambitions of promotion, awards, anything of that sort. When you have an incentive to do that, combined with individuals who are true believers that just makes for a toxic stew. For Friend, being an FBI special agent was his dream job. 
After earning a degree at the University of Notre Dame, he found his way into law enforcement in 2009. He worked as a sworn police officer in Savannah and Pooler, Georgia, for four years before joining the FBI in 2014. He investigated violent crimes on Indian reservations in northeastern Nebraska for seven years before transferring to Daytona Beach to investigate crimes against children. Friend said, quote, It's all I ever wanted to do, and for eight years I got to do it. I really felt like I did a really good job. I'm certainly not a troublemaking employee who's looking to burn the bridge up behind him as he walks out the door. Friend said he always kept politics out of his police work. But early this year, Washington police came looking for him. He was invited to sit for a transcribed interview with the House Select Subcommittee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government in February. Friend resigned from the FBI Bureau on the day of his testimony, making him free to speak about his concerns before Congress. He said the Republican majority allowed him to present his story and air his concerns about the FBI, while the Democrat minority lobbed accusations at him after generating a three 100-page report and leaking cherry-picked sections to friendly media. The report accused Friend and others of concocting conspiracy theories rather than providing proof. It was suggested that Friend was a grifter because after losing his six-figure salary with the FBI. During his suspension, he took a $5,000 stipend from a charity headed by former Trump aide and Epoch TV personality, Cash Patel. Friend told the committee that one Democrat attorney showed Friend a photograph of a January 6 suspect wearing a helmet and body armor and asked him, does that look like somebody who went there that day to do something good? He told the Democrat attorney, well, he looks bad. Probably did some really bad things that day. Probably should get arrested for them, get charged for them. But it really would be a shame if we lost a trial because we violated his civil rights. Friend said, that was my mic drop moment before Congress. He said, I wish that it had been in front of an open hearing. You know, I was really proud of that. Friend hopes to return for public testimony before the Weaponization Subcommittee, along with fellow FBI whistleblowers Kyle Sarathan, Garrett O'Boyle, and George Hill. He said he's done his best to make peace with his department from the FBI, beginning with a talk with his attorney a few days before he was suspended. My attorney said, now look, if, if you accepted that they're never going to bring you back? And I said, yeah. He said, because that's a challenge that I have with a lot of my whistleblower clients. They ultimately want to get back to their job. And you just have to know that's 
not going to happen. Now this is right. If what Friend and Tucker Carlson have said is true, the January 6th so-called riot was far more peaceful than most of America has been told. And if it was far more peaceful, isn't it about time that we called our Congress, our representatives, and urge they do everything possible to get the imprisoned so-called rioters out of prison? Isn't it about time that all of us began praying for the release of the invaders? What a great name friend is, isn't it? And he certainly appears to be a friend to America. This comes down to another, whose report do you believe? The FBI or the whistleblower? Part four of my series, Fox News Fires Tucker Carlson, tomorrow.